So hello, welcome to Wildwood and welcome to our bear talk. We'll be telling you a little bit about the bears here at Wildwood, so let's introduce them. We currently have two European brown bears. They are male and last year they celebrated their 21st birthday. We're not 100% certain if they are brothers, but they could very well be. And they're called, well, they've actually had several different names through their lives. When they first arrived, they were known as Milcho and Gosho. Later, there was an official competition to name them, and they were given the names Kai and Jeff. However, their keepers had already given them nicknames. They are now known as Fluffy and Scruffy because those are the names they respond to. There are, believe it or not, just eight different types of bear in the world and they're classed as the largest predators on land. Bigger than tigers, bigger than lions and definitely bigger than wolves. Of the eight, brown bears are the most widespread. You can find them right the way across Europe. You can find them in Scandinavia, Greece, Turkey, all the way through Russia. They're also found in Mongolia, parts of China, Japan, the Himalayan mountains, and then over in North America in Alaska, Canada, and parts of the northern United States. Brown bears are one of three bears that are found inside the Arctic Circle. The other two being the American black bear and of course the polar bear. Believe it or not, the Arctic is actually named after a bear, but not the polar bear. It's named after the brown bear. The scientific name for the brown bear is Ursus arctos. And translating that, Ursus is the Latin for bear. Arctos is the ancient Greek for bear. So technically a brown bear is known scientifically as the bear bear. Just to make things even funnier, the European brown bear is a subspecies known as Ursus arctos arctos. So technically, it's the bear bear bear. Across their range, there are at least 10 different subspecies of brown bear, including the European, uh, the famous grizzly bear of North America, and the Kodiak bear, which is quite often stated as being the largest bear in the world. To give you an idea of scale, at their highest weight, our bears weigh 300 kilograms. On average, the Kodiak bears weigh 600 kilograms. We're looking at bears twice the weight of ours. Although widespread, brown bears can be endangered in certain locations or even extinct. And that's the case with Britain. We know that brown bears did live here until at least Neolithic times, the New Stone Age. That was when people started to farm and brown bears seemed to start declining in number around the same time. We believe that brown bears were extinct in Britain by about 500 AD. That's nearly one and a half thousand years ago. And the reason is purely down to hunting. They were seen as a danger, they were seen as a threat to livestock, so they were systematically wiped out. It's worth mentioning that there were a lot of bears around in the Middle Ages, but they were for entertainment. Things like bear baiting and dancing bears were extremely popular, but all those brown bears were brought in from Europe. Although bears are sometimes classed as predators or hunters, the truth is they are actually omnivores, and that means they can eat both plants and meat. This is the replica skull of a Kodiak bear, so quite a bit bigger than fluff or scruff, but essentially the same shape. When you look at it from the side, you can see massive long canine teeth, very, very chunky at the front, with interlocking canines. The sharp canine teeth are for spearing prey, for holding it in place, but at the back, and if I open the skull up, you can see broad, flat, crushing molars. And this is for crunching down on a wide range of foods. 
If you're wondering why this tooth arrangement seems a bit familiar, we have pretty much the same type of teeth in our mouths. Incisors at the front, the long canine teeth that we know as eye teeth, and crushing molars at the back. We regularly get asked, do the brown bears eat meat? The truth is that they can, but our bears don't get a lot of straight red meat. They will occasionally get uh, some rabbit or chicken meat as a treat, but the bulk of a brown bear's diet in the wild will actually be from plants. At least 70% of their diet in the wild comes from foliage, grasses, leaves. We try to keep the diet here as natural as possible, which means the bulk of the food that they're getting from the keepers will be fruit and veg. In addition, they eat a lot of plant materials that are in their enclosure. And this includes grazing on the grass, pulling down bra uh, branches to eat oak leaves, and uh, a particular favourite is scooping the pondweed out of their pond, which they eat like spaghetti. Quite often when we talk with visitors and we ask them what they think bears eat, they will instantly say fish. When you think of brown bears, you tend to imagine the iconic footage of grizzly bears in North America fishing for salmon. And the truth is that the bears do eat fish, but usually in the late summer. That's when the salmon would be going up river to spawn. And just as they would in the wild be eating fish in the late summer, that's when we make sure that our guys have fish in their diet. Probably another foodstuff you might think of when you imagine bears particularly if you're thinking about Pooh Bear, is honey. And again, bears in the wild will happily take honey. They have thick fur and fairly thick skin, so they don't feel the stings of bees. Our bears do get honey as a treat. They adore sweet stuff. So they'll get things like honey, jam, peanut butter and marmalade so it's surprising to think that Winnie the Pooh and Paddington are actually closer to real life than you might think. Bears in the wild, when they find a bee's nest, don't just eat the honey. They eat the honey, the wax, the grubs, and even the bees themselves. And that's true of most brown bears. If they find creepy crawlies, they will happily eat them. In fact, pretty much anything small and mobile is potentially food. And that'll include small mammals, snakes, toads and frogs, and they'll happily take eggs as well. It's worth mentioning that in the wild, brown bears use their senses to find their food. They have similar vision to ours. They see in colour, but their main senses are their hearing and their sense of smell. Hearing is probably similar to that of a dog, so they can hear a fair bit higher than a human. Their sense of smell is so, so much better. It's not just better than us, it's better than a dog. Their noses, as you can see when they're sniffing, are very, very flexible. A bear can actually smell a rotting carcass from over two miles away. There are two other things about bear diets that are worth mentioning. The first is that they will happily scavenge. When you hear about animals eating carrion, it literally means dead meat, animals that they have not killed for themselves. As I mentioned, bears have extremely good sense of smell, so they're able to smell out bodies that have died of natural causes or been killed by other animals, such as wolves or lynx. But the final thing is to mention that bears will and can actively hunt. When we look at a bear, we tend to think of it as being slow and lumbering. That is deceptive. Remember that these are incredibly strong animals. When you look at a brown bear, you notice a hump on their shoulders. Those are the muscles that power their front legs and their jaws. They have a bite force nearly as strong as a tiger, and they can run at speeds of 30 miles an hour. To put that in context, Usain Bolt has been clocked at 27 miles an hour. Never try to outrun a bear, there's no point. And although it is unusual, 
bears in the wild have actually been seen chasing down deer. As long as they can get into strike range, one blow from their paw, and that's it. The deer is not going to recover. Fluff and Scruff are two of our visitors' most favourite animals at Wildwood. Partly because of their personalities, but also down to their story. These two had a really bad start to life. For 15 years, they lived in what can only be described as a concrete cell in Bulgaria. To tell the story, Bulgaria used to be under communist rule and they had a tradition known as canned hunting. You'd have centres where bears would be bred and raised and then they'd be released into a reserve where important officials could come and shoot them. Bears in Europe gained protection in 1993, but we believe that the hunting in Bulgaria carried on until they joined uh, the European Union in 2007. When that happened, the staff at the bear centre where Fluff and Scruff lived weren't being paid anymore. So they simply left and they left all the bears in the cages. What saved the bears were the local people. On a daily basis, the locals were going up to the bear centre. They were feeding the bears. Now, admittedly, they didn't have a lot to feed them. They were having to feed them on porridge. There is a famous story about bears and porridge, but as a rule, it's not what bears need to eat morning, noon and night. The plight of the bears became known to several organisations. And between 2013 and 2015, every one of the bears at that location were rehomed. Fluffy and Scruffy came to us in November of 2014. And when they first arrived, we genuinely weren't sure if they were going to survive. They were very, very ill. They were very, very thin and they were psychologically traumatised. Before they came to us, they had never felt grass underneath their feet. They had never seen a tree. And they were doing behaviour that we know as stereotyping. This is where an animal keeps repeating the same odd behaviour over and over again. One of the famous bits of behaviour in old zoo collections was when an animal would sit in one place, sway from side to side and drool. Another is excessive pacing. And not only did these two bears do that, they also did a uh, behavior where one of them would constantly turn his head. The keepers worked with the bears. They slowly but steadily got their weight up. When that was achieved, they could start getting medication. And today, we literally have visitors who saw them shortly after their arrival or in the first month when they were released into their main enclosure. And those people have actually asked me, are they the same bears? The truth is, yes, they are the same bears, but it is that much of a physical and mental difference. We've been able to see how these bears have developed. To start with, they were constantly looking for food. They couldn't settle, they couldn't rest or relax. With time, and over the first few months, as their weight started to rise, they would actually start to rest, to take naps. They'd also start to play. They'd never had a chance to do that before. They had to conserve their energy. As I say, their personalities started to appear. Of the two of them, Fluff is the one in charge. Scruff is the one who tends to be a bit more mischievous. The names were down to their appearance. Fluffy, when he's dry in the sun, tends to fluff up more and is lighter in color. Scruffy tends to look a bit darker and usually looks more like his fur is slicked down. We celebrated their official 21st birthday in 2019. But the truth is, we're not 100% certain about their age because we don't have accurate records of their birth. Bears can easily live to 30, so we're expecting them to be with us for at least another decade. Our enclosure here at Wildwood is said to be one of the best in Europe and we're proud that we're able to give these bears a permanent forever home and all the enrichment and excitement that they've missed out on in the early part of their life. There's one final chapter to the story of our brown bears, and that's to do with their husbandry. 
We're very proud to say that here at Wildwood, we've been trying to keep their diet and behavior as natural as possible. As you can see, um, the bears are allowed to forage naturally with Fluffy directly behind me eating the grass. And we deliberately feed them in a very natural method. The keepers will actually ring an old fashioned school bell. That's the signal for the bears to come to their inner enclosure. They'll be locked in and then the keepers will be able to enter the main larger enclosure and scatter their food. This means that the bears have to actively search for the food. They'd be quite happy to have the food in a bowl, they'd scoff a lot, and then have nothing to do for the next few hours. This way they're using their senses, it's keeping them mobile and active, and it's keeping them mentally engaged at the same time. There's something that we do here at Wildwood that is unusual by the standards of most British and European zoos. We actually allow our bears to go into torpor. If you're wondering what that is, in some parts of their range, brown bears go into true hibernation. They switch off at the end of autumn, they sleep right the way through to spring. In other parts where the climate isn't quite so harsh, bears do something called torpor. Effectively, they slow down, but don't fully hibernate. They'll sleep for several weeks at a time, then get up, wander about and go back to bed. The reasons for allowing the bears to go into torpor are mainly to do with health. When they're in their winter sleep, their bodies are ticking over and doing repair and maintenance. We can prove that our bears have been less prone to minor ailments like coughs, colds and toothache since they started doing their winter sleep again. However, from the point of view of an attraction, do you really want bears not visible for three months? Not only have we proved the health benefits, we've proved how to get around that problem. Fluff and Scruff now have a low level camera mounted in their indoor den. Even if they're asleep, you can see them on the monitor. You can see what they're doing. It doesn't disturb them. And it's a chance for visitors in winter time to still keep tabs on their two favorite animals. In 2019, some of our bear keepers attended a major conference of bear keepers. And the other keepers have said that we are doing field leading husbandry, research and maintenance with our pair. So we are incredibly proud, not just of Fluff and Scruff, but the work that our keepers have put in with them. If you do visit us, and you do see the bears pacing, that is usually because they're coming up to feed time or they're looking for their keepers. Fluff, who's sitting by the oak tree, when he first came, he was constantly doing a manoeuvre where he'd be swinging his head, tossing his head. Nowadays, he will only do that when he's really, really excited. And it's pretty much the same as a dog having one of the crazy sessions and starting to run around. I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about the bears here at Wildwood and we hope you have a great time when you come to visit them in person.